Hey guys, Tyler at North 40 Fly Shop in Coeur d'Alene. Today we're going to be doing a fly tying segment for you. Today we're going to show you how to tie a 20 inch stone fly, but this one's a little bit different. This is really a double beaded 20 inch stone fly. So in our area, um, over the years of guiding here and fishing early spring, we have a ton of stone flies in the west. Um, I used to guide on the Clark Fork for a long time and one of my big pet peeves when I was guiding was uh, initially tying some of these flies that were buying some of these flies that we get in the fly shop just weren't heavy enough you know we'd add, have to add weight on the leader split shot um, you know if it's really high flows and we're fishing tight to the bank the last thing I wanted it to have the fly do is not sink quick enough um, a lot of times we'd fish shorter leaders but really heavy flies so I started adding more weight and more weight to the fly uh, make it sometimes a little bit easier to cast versus having to put so much split shot on there and uh, the fly would naturally have more weight to it, you know, and then tungsten came around, that helped out, so on and so forth. But uh, for a little fly, this guy's a, a rock. I mean, um, I've got lead underneath here, a tungsten bead, a cone head. So this thing for its size, and again, you guys can tie it a little bit bigger if you want, a little bit smaller is an absolute bomb, you know. So a lot of weight there. I just don't like having to always add weight to my leader if I don't have to and let the fly sink on its own. Um, kind of more natural drift sometimes, I think. But uh, you guys could even tie this on a jig. Um, so many different variations on the 20-incher, but this is my particular spin on it. Um, and it's a great fly. Early uh, spring stonefly hatches, whether it be squalas, golden stones, that sort of thing, this fly really does well. It's kind of a, a hybridized prince nymph, if you will. You know, if you guys know what the prince nymph is, this is just a kind of a variation of that. But uh, good fly, fish is great, heavy. Kind of all the things I like in an early spring uh, stone fly nymph. So let's show you how to tie it. All right, guys. So let's show you how to tie the uh, double bead 20 inch stone fly nymph. So I've already got both of my uh, my, my cone and my bead on there. Uh, you guys can change colors. Obviously, you could do hot orange. You could do copper for the cone. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But uh, this is kind of my format on how I tie it. So I already got the beads on there. Um, I'm gonna get a little a little bit more weight like we're talking on the intro so a little bit of lead here I'm gonna do about three or four wraps this is pretty heavy heavy lead here I don't want too many wraps here but um, maybe on a bigger hook you guys could definitely add more but so we're gonna go like that we're gonna leave a little bit of a space here um, so that bead sits kind of right in the middle um, so make sure you tie your lead down right there and secure it in Kind of smush our tags down a little bit here. Tie it down nice and good. Okay. Next, we're going to put put our biots in for our tail. So get two goose biots for our tail. And we're going to get them kind of splayed out against each other here. Like so, okay. And then next we're gonna tie in our peacock pearl. So I grab, I don't count ever, but I don't know, eight, nine, 10 strands. And that little gap I left right there, I'm gonna tie it in right there uh, by the tips, okay. Next we're gonna add our wire in. And we're going to wrap forward just to the end of the lead. Tie that off like so. And then counter rib, a little piece came undone there. That's all right. Get rid of him. No problem. So about four wraps. Tie your wire down. Trim that off. Okay. 
Next we're going to tie in our thin skin or our wing case like so. All right, I still want to try and get that bead to sit right in the middle. All right now for our dubbing, this is a pretty healthy amount here. This is a great squall nymph pattern for if you guys are Bitterroot guys or Upper Clark Fork, Lower Clark Fork. You know, out here in the West, that squall hatch come March through April is awesome. And this is a perfect one for that hatch. So I'm going to stack quite a bit in here, guys. Those stoneflies have a really nice big thorax to them. Then I'm going to skip up in front here. I like that. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And then bring your thin skin over. Trap that down. Tie off that. And then rib legs last so I get a couple of them going here put them on the top about three or four loose wraps separate them cool we're gonna add just a little extra dubbing to clean that head up just a touch here guys just like so And then tie it off. I'll come back through later and glue these. So there she is. There's the double bead 20 entry. You guys can come through and kind of pick out your dubbing a little bit if you want so your bead shows a little better. But really weighty, meaty little fly. Like I said in the intro, you guys could put a jig hook on it if you like the jig thing. Um, tie it bigger, tie it smaller. but. This thing's a rock. I mean, uh, tungsten bead, cone, a little bit of lead under the, underneath there. This thing is its own weight. So great point fly. You guys can run a secondary smaller mayfly nymph, pheasant tail, smaller prince nymph. But springtime, this is a killer, killer fly. Love it. All right, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Take care.